Professor Gore, mm -hmm. Wenjing, thank you for coming to our, our little studio here at uh, New York University. It's a very exciting meeting. Uh, Franco Muja and uh, Angela Paradiso have done a good job. Um, basics talks, clinical talks, genetics talks, counseling talks, it's really, it's good stuff. Now you gave a super talk uh, about stem cells. Uh, what have they got to do with hereditary breast and ovarian cancer? Right. I think there's a new paradigm start to emerge in that uh, we should need to look at the cancer cells differently. So not every cancer cells in the tumor are equal. So these are, in a way, very much similar to what we have in normal tissue. So there are stem cells and the more differential cells. Uh, stem cells are a special type of cells. They have a sort of unlimited ability to proliferate, while the differential cells tend to arrest once they proliferate a few times. Yeah. So I think now in cancer, there is a similar paradigm going on. So some cells are able to proliferate unlimitedly. So those type of cells, so this group of cells, are more important in terms of tumor progression and also more important in terms of uh, tumor recurrence after treatment. So we need to understand what are the mechanism, what are the molecular pathways governing this type of cells. Therefore, we are, we'll be able to uh, treat the cancer more efficiently. So why, why, doesn't, why don't stem cells die when you give them chemotherapy? Yeah, that's a mystery that we don't understand. But they so, don't, do but, they? But their evidence suggests that. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully by understanding the, the stem cell biology more, we, we may be able to uncover why those cells are more resistant to chemotherapy, radiation mm. therapy. But well, you were and talking so about symmetrical and asymmetric division. What's uh -huh. that got to do with it? Uh -huh. Right. So I think um, so the so the stem cells will divide in two fashions, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, symmetrical and asymmetrical. So the symmetrical is a basically the one stem cell makes another stem cell. Mm -hmm. So they are identical uh, functionally. Asymmetrical, uh, uh, a stem cell will divide into one stem cell and one more differential cell. That differential mm -hmm. cell will gradually lose their ability to form tumor or in normal setting form a new uh, tissue. So we, if we can find a way to prevent symmetrical division and make the stem cells only give rise to differential cells, then there's a hope people some people call this differentiation therapy. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 may, we may be able to induce the differentiation of cancer stem cells, therefore gradually eliminate those uh, cells while uh, drive the tumor growth. Uh, but, but you said that uh -huh. mature cells in the breast cancer tissue can actually be persuaded right. to go back in yes. reverse to stem cell, to cancer stem cells. There is a slug or socks or something like that. What was, what's, uh, what was, right. tell us about that story. There's a, no, there's a wrinkle here. <laughs> so, so we are just starting to find, especially in cancer, because they are ab abnormal cells. So they have particularly high plasticity. So under some circumstances, under certain conditions, they can convert, they can reacquire uh, the stem cell status capability. Uh, so uh, our work actually have sort of identified a molecular pathway that can mediate this process. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this will, of uh, course this is still very early days, hopefully down the road we will be able to find a way to, uh, uh, a, a, a way uh, of intervention to prevent this molecular pathway, therefore to prevent the reversion of non-stem cells back into stem cells, therefore prevent a de novo generation of cancer stem cells, and hopefully this can keep the cancer stem cell in check. Okay. Uh, but not kill them? Hopefully. You could exhaust them? Exhaust them, mm. or by combination of approaches, by curing the stem cells on one hand, and preventing the conversion of non-stem cells into stem mm. cells on the other hand, by combining these two different approaches. When so, really so tell us about the pathway, the slug. Yeah, so these are two uh, transcription factors. So basically these are genes induce the other gene expression. So essentially, so they are as, as a switch for different gene uh, programs. So we found these two key transcription factors, SLAG and SOX9. So they need to act together uh, in mammary system. They can convert uh, the different mammary cells so back into mammary stem cells. And also, we are starting to accumulate evidence showing this kind of phenomenon works in breast cancer, also occur in breast cancer, okay. that mm. can drive a more different tumor cells back into 
let's differentiate tumor cells. So what controls the slug in the SOX9? That's one thing we are studying right now. Mm. So we hope to find that the control, which uh, the, the, the key signaling pathways that will mediate these two gene expression, the expression of these two transfer factors, mm. that could give us uh, a target to intervene. So, hopefully, so one can imagine in cancer, in experimental setting, we can express a gene by using experimental approaches. Mm. But I think what's happened in cancer is some extra signal the signals in tumor could activate these two genes, mediate, uh, induce the expression of these two genes. So if we can find those signals, we can prevent those signals, therefore we could presumably uh, inhibit expression of the two factors, therefore prevent uh, the, 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 the cancer stem cells, inhibit cancer stem cells. Good. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's very clear. You've done a lot of this work at Bob Weinberg's lab, but you're starting shortly in Einstein. Exactly. In New York. Exactly. Good luck, and exactly. uh, I hope everything goes well. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you.